Hello everyone, I'm great to share some of the work by our team on Hacking the Bot. Today, we will share some of the security research findings of LP1, Insecure Link, Security Analyze and Critical Attacks of LP1. First of all, please allow us to introduce ourselves. I'm Li Yuxiang. I'm a senior security research at Tencent Black Team. Now I am focusing on mobile security and IoT security. I have also reported multiple vulnerabilities in Chrome and Android, and I am also a speaker of Black, uh, Black Hat, Devcom, Kansi West, Akinaba. The other is my teammate, Wu Huiyu. He is also a senior security research at Tencent Black Team. Now, he is mainly focusing on ALT security research. He is also a bug hunter, witness of Gipan, and speaker of Black Hat, Defcom, Hacking the Ball, Kansi West, and POC. Tencent Black Team was founded by Tencent Security Platform Department, focusing on security research in the areas of ALT and crowd visualization. Report 200 vulnerabilities to vendors such as Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. For more detail about our team, you can visit our team website. Let's take a look at the agendas. First of all, we will introduce the basic technologies of LP1, related supply chains and the difference between Solar One and MBLT. In the second part, we will introduce the new findings of Lola One security research, Lola Dump, as well as our practice. The third part will share the internal implement implementations of MBLT ship and security risk. Finally, we will provide some security advice to the relevant wonder in the Lola One and MBLT supply chain. In order to overcome the limitations of soft rain protocol, low power wide area networks LP1 was introduced, which offers a long range connectivity in the, in the orders of kilometers. It has low power and low bit rate for long distance communication. The mainstream LP1 technology include LoLa, MBLT, SIG4, I present. This communications technologies has been widely used, including smart city, smart architecture, smart industries, and so on, which belong to the application senior scenarios of LP1. Why did we choose to study the security of LP1? According to the research of some organization. It is predicted that more than 1 billion devices will be uh, will use LP1 technology in the future, among which LoLa and MBLT will occupy a large market share. At the same time, compare, compare with Zigbee, Bluetooth, and other communication technologies, the security research of LP1 is relatively less with the large scale use of LP1 devices. Security in this area will be very important. Okay, let's introduce the two mainstream technologies involved in this topic. LoLa1 and MBLT first introduced LoLa, LoLa1. LoLa is a moderation technology used in the physical laser that enable long range, low power communication by using CSS modulation. It uses unlined frequency band. Anyone can independently de deploy the network. Brother one is a cloud-based media that controls laser protocol, but acts mainly as network laser protocol for managing communication between LP1 gateways and end nodes devices as a routing protocol, meaning by the LoLa alliance.
MPLT is a new IoT technology set up by 3GVP as a part of release 13. Also, it is integrated into the LTE standard. It can be regarded as the new air interface. It uses the Lions frequency band, which are the same frequency numbers used in LTE and employ QPFK modulation. There are different frequency band deployment, which are standalone. Guard band and in band deployment. Let's take a look at the supply chains in Lola One and MBLT in the real world. Let's start with the chip. Lola patent technology is dominate mainly con concentrates in Zentouch. There are more MBLT chip vendors, including Qualcomm's MediaTek and High Silicon, all of which has deployed a development the developers shift of their own architectures. They are, then there is a model. Some major models manufacturers such as IK, Cortex, Flex, accumulate the shift and the capabilities they provide through integration and get land to the equipment manufacturers. Equipment manufacturers will purchase a large number of models for the development of end products. For example, water and electricity matters, dock, window sensors, and so on. In the end, when deploying the LP1 solution, you need to work with crowd vendors of operators to complete the deployment. At this point, the whole solution is fully deployed and the schemes will be managed or optimized with crowd data in the later stage. We find that in the real world, a company LP1 solutions require the participation of many vendors. So we think that the security of LP1 supply chains is worth starting. Let's briefly compare the difference between Lola1 and MBLT. From the technological characteristics, because Lola One is simple and easy to deploy, so in bet better life coverage, cost efficiencies will be better than MBLT on the concentrates. MBLT is measured by traditional telecom operators and refer to 3GPP standard, so is excellent in terms of latency and security. Security is the focus of our presentation. Lola One user AES One S is security basic. MBLT is secure features for our LTE, which has security protections in AS and AS. At the same time, it uses SIM cards as authentication, which is relatively more secure. Let's take a look at the difference between the two technologies in network architectures. First, the Lola One device transmits data to the gateway by radio. The gateway is very similar to the router. One side receives broader package. The other side can access Earthnet through LTE, Wi-Fi, and other way. Finally, it reached the network server and the solution managers can manage the device according to the application servers. The Lola One gateway is easy to buy, which is of great help of our security research. MBLT is quite different. It is, uh, it is a modified version of LTE. Therefore, the device is connected to the corporate operators networks through the base station called E node B in LTE. An E node B is intensive and difficult to buy and require in different technologies of radio before it can be deployed on its own. Then there is a core network server of operators. MBLT follows LTE's APC 
which is a complete black box for Earth. Finally, connect to the IoT platform through the network. Manager can manage the equipment through this platform. Next, let's take a look at the LoLa 1 protocol. The whole protocol consists of two parts. The LoLa is responsible for radio moderation and deep moderation. The MAC laser is our force. According to the specification, LoLa 1 devices will be divided into three categories, class 1, class B, class C. Choose according to different scenario. There are many keys in LoLa 1, generally speaking. The security basics of the protocol is AES. The APP key is stored in the nodes and servers used to generate the season key. Network season key and application season key are season key that are used for encryption, decryption, and MIC verification. Roller one has two ways to active devices, ABP and OTAA. ABP can be understood as a const season key why OTAA conducts key negotiations through APP keys. The existing security studies of the two technologies are mainly as follows. For LoLa1, the existing security issues are mainly protocol specifications and key deployment. The security issues of the specifications which has been fixed in the new version of the specification. But there are also great challenges in using the new specification in the real world. The security risk of LoLa1 deployment is usually uh, issues of security use of keys. At this stage, it can be well served by improving manufacturer's security awareness and compliance operation. As for MBLT, there are few studies, most of which is service of theory. We will not introduce the security risks of the protocol specification in detail. Let's take a look at the security states of Lola one device in the real world. After our analyze, it is generally divided into two types of vendors. One type of vendor is already aware of the security risk associated with nodes deployment. That every key is usually a random key or a one or one machine one key, which great guarantees the security risk of the network. In addition, they also provide guidance of hardware security. A types of vendors still lack security awareness in order to facilitate deployment. They usually use the same APP key or a well-known APP key or marks the APP keys on the device shells in plain text of serial code. At the same time, there is not enough attention to the to to the protections of hardware and firmware. We believe that it more and more vendors pay attention to the security of Lola One. These problems will be solved. So design these security risks. What other Lola One security issues has not received enough attention? Now we will introduce our new discoveries in the Lola One supply chain, namely Lola Dan. This is a security issue involving the supply chain, which has not received attention in previous studies. Their risk occurs in nodes, gateways, and cost servers next. We will introduce the implementations of the Lola One supply chain and existing attack surface and our practice. Lola1 many Lola1 has many open source implementation 
and these implementations are actually used in the real world. This slide lists several of the projects involved in our study, including the LoLaWAN protocol stack, gateways, and servers. This open source projects can help us better understanding the LoLaWAN solution. At the same time, it is indexed a project that is being used in the real world. Let's take a look at the architectures of the LoLaWAN node. Products on the marquee you read have two architectures. The first is the MPC, uh, M MCU plus radio mode. This method is low cost and the application and LoLa1 protocol stacks running and run, runs in this MCUs and operate radios to send radio packets. The other is the ways of adding models to external MCU at this point. MCU URI only run application or RTOS. The works on the protocol stacks and video operation is integrated into the model. And the model vendors will also add the parts of the IT library. But regardless of the architecture, we find that the Lola one protocol stack is an essential common component. The most widely used protocol stack is Lola one Lola Mac node. This is why we started in uh, this survey. Lola one gateway as similar to Protoss. Packet forwarder components are purely running on Linux. The packet forwarder component reach the Lola one packet through the drivers. It capsulates the data into the specific protocol and send it to the network server. Packet forwarder component, including packet forwarder, basic station, MQTT, and so on. Hardware need to be connected to the SX1301 to operate Lola radio packet. For example, the architectures of the RAK831 gateway shows that it is based on Raspberry Pi connect to SX1301 through a garbage spot. The mainstream Lola 1 servers are CurveStack and TDN, both of which can be used for private deployment. In addition, TDN provides public service that allow anyone to build Lola 1 solution. The two architectures are as follows. Curve stacks on the left and TDNs on the right in general. They all include several components MQTT blockchains, network server, application server, database, interaction. Communication between these components use MQTT, gRPC, HTTP, and other protocols. After introducing the technology implementation in the real world, let's summarize the security risks of Lola One supply chain. On the node, we can pay attention to the vulnerabilities of the Lola Mac node, which is widely used software. On the gateway, we can pay attention to the security issues of different packet forwarder. On the server, they are all written in GoLang. So we can focus on the security risk introduced by the default configuration and open source code. First of all, let's do the security analysis of Lola Mac node. The software is developed by Sentach and is widely used. More packet pressing needs to know AES key, which we think will be very diff difficult in future. Therefore, our focus is on the logical before participating in the AES operation. And this part of the code is very simple. But fortunately, we found a vulnerability. The vulnerability is caused by Lola Mac nodes fails fail to verify whether the packet length is valid when processing join accept respond packet. 
the vulnerability exists in the process of OTAA, which can cause harm to the devices that are joining the network. But this deploy project is necessary to redraw the network, which need to be combined with other attack methods. The ob obvious advantage of this vulnerability is that we can launch attacks without losing the IPP key and achieve a widespread denial of service by sending malicious radio packet. So how do we send radio packets? Because of the low power consumptions of LP1, they are not always online. So attacking such device require a specific cycles. The received windows of class A devices is defined in the Lola one specifications after the device sending an uplink packet to stop receiving windows will be open and the Lola packet will be processed only when it is received in the receiving window. In addition, the downlink channel is also different in different areas. For example, in CN 470, RX1 channels number equals uplink channel number mode 48. Therefore, after calculating the appreciate delayed and channel, you can really relaunch an attack. After having the ability to send malicious video packets, we can select some deployment boss as the environment for local Mac, Lola Mac no debugging. We can choose the uh, we can choose listed P N U C L E O S L R ones deployment boss as the taxing attack equipment, which provides MCU expansion boss and STIC link. Where's code and open OCD are used to debug the software. This deployment list development boss is very suitable for debugging the protocol stack, can help us quickly verify the vulnerability. When everything was ready, we choose a temporary choice sensors as the target to check it. The attack follow is as follow. When the temperature sensor sends a uplink OTAA packet, our hijackers sniff the radio packet and notify the local server. After calculating the downlink channels and delayed, the local server sends the malicious packet to the hijacker. The hijacker sends it to the device after the after an appreciate delayed. At this point, the sensors resist malicious packet, trigger the related vulnerability, and the device denial of service. The above is the a practice of the Lola Magno vulnerabilities we found in the actual devices. We believe that Lola One equipment is used very much and is mostly used in unattention scenarios such as smart city and agriculture. Even denial of service has the great impact. Next, let's take a look at security of the gateway component, Lola Basic Station. Lola Basic Station is new stacks of the art gateway packet folders compared with traditional component. It defines two protocols. CUPS and LNS. CUPS is used to upgrade basic station and the protocol formats generally including include length and data. LNS use WebSocket to establish a long connections with the server and the servers can send data to the gateway. In theory, if LTLS pending is you, it will be safer. 
After our analysis, we believe that there are many security risks in this component, which may lead to security risk under M MITM hijacking of malicious servers. The main risks are as follows. First, this component does not enable authentication mode by default. So, a lack of security awareness of the deployers may lead to MITM hijacking. Second, the LNS protocol contains powerful capability and may be at risk of a bug. The service is fully truth in the LNS protocol. Therefore, even if LTLS is enabled, a malicious server can still abuse the capabilities of the LNS protocol, such as the remote code exception. So, CUPS itself has memory of logical vulnerabilities when processing the data, which can lead to security risk. Risks of a blast of LNS capability. We learned that we learned from the documentations that LNS can test remote commands. Also, this is helpful for remote managers of gateways. We believe that it may be above and lead to security risk. Therefore, we can RCE by hijacking of malicious server to send package to the gateway component. For example, uh, in the pictures on the left, we create a plain text pun.txt files on the gateway by the above LNS capability. Next, we will share the security risks of the servers. The default configurations of Kerstack is a security risk. If the server deployer does not read the instructions, help reads or does not have security awareness, it will lead to the risk of an attack on the server. For example, the default weak passwords may be used in the database web. If an attack can enter the web service of the application service with a weak password, we can obtain sensitive sensitive device information such as device day, AVP key, and so on. In addition, some MQTT and gRPC surveys are not authenticated, which can lead to permissions of data disclosed. We verified this security risk in April last year. A few days later, we shared, uh, we, we searched the current networks and found that the deployment of Curve servers shows a growing trend. This security risks are worth of our attention. MQTT integration is usually used by manager to manage the dis deploy Lola One solution. In the default configuration of MQTT broker, the user name, passwords, and ACLs are optional. Therefore, incorrect configurations may bring the following security risk. Attackers can subscribe to any topic through wide cards. In this way, the data of the interaction between the device and the servers can be obtained, including device information. After knowing the device information, the attack can also forage downlink data and send it to the nodes through MQTT. In addition, we found a bug in the UDP postings logicals of the Lola One stack code. Sending a malicious UDP package caused the server to crash 
when the gateway ID is known. There is also a way to attack the server. Because the server are deployed by Golang, memory vulnerabilities are rare. So you can pay attention to logical vulnerabilities. There may be some unexpected discoveries. After introducing the security risk of follow-on supply chain, we will share some research finding about MBLT. Similarly, we will also introduce some of our current attempts in terms of technological implementation, attack surface analysis, and practice. Let's start with an overview of MBLT shift. MBLT shift are highly integrated URI SLC. It can take different shift architecture and RTOS. In addition, the MBLT protocol is far more complex than Roller One. The entire protocol stack includes baseband, TCP IP, and application. The base bank includes the physical lasers of MBLT and the upper laser follows the protocol of LTE. Finally, in the MBLT network, there are black box in the EPC, EMB, LT crowd platform, which bring a lot of challenges to the security research. Next, we will introduce some findings in the reserve engineering of MBLT shift. We will introduce shift from two main strains manufacturers. Next, we will introduce two MBLT shift architecture. First of all, let's introduce the shift architectures of A. It is a multiple course architecture each core using ARM Cortex M0, the three cores are used for different prop purposes, and each core has its own RTOS for task scheduling. Core A contains the application laser protocols in the TCP IP protocol stack, such as DTLS, CLAP, LWM2M. In addition, it's also including the application laser, which is used to provide model vendors to display a uh, developer the corresponding IT libraries of application development. APPs can only provide IT commands interface so that external MCU can interact with MBLT shift of models directly through AT command. In this way, the development of the application is mainly focused on the external MCU. Core B mainly deal with low level protocol, including baseband, such as NAS, RC, L2, L1, related to MBLT. The use and use LWIP as the TCP IP protocol step to provide socket wipers function for course A. Course C is mainly to provide some security capabilities, including the security checked needs by security boot, FOTA, and so on. The manufacturer involves a set of RPC mechanism which use shared memory to realize the interworking of data between cores. The other shift architecture is displayed in a single course way. Take shift B as an example, which uses ARM Cortex M4. The entire core is divided into two domains, including the application domain and model domain. It is very similar to the divisions of IP and models in mobile form. Each domain 
use a different RTLS for task scheduling. The application domain include the entire TCP IP protocol stack and the upper application compared with shift A. We also use the LWIP libraries as the TCP IP protocol stack implementation, but it belongs to the ABP, uh, application domains together with the upper leather protocol. Modern domain is mainly related to baseband processing. The two domains communicate with each other by shared credit. Bootloader is also included in this course. Similarly, the IPP laser in, in the application domain can provide only the IT command interface for external MCU to operate through the IT command. After our reserve analyze, we found that even through different vendors adopt different architecture, but some technological implementation are similar. We summarize the attack surface of MBLT chip. There are three categories. The first category is related to TCP IP, which may use the same surpass libraries or implement specific logical based on the stand standards. The other is related to baseband, where the technology implementation is related to ship vendors, each of which has its own implementations and will not use open source library libraries. It's more difficult to find these kinds of software vulnerability. Another category is the risk of intercourse communication and interdomain communication. Most of the codes we mentioned was belong to ship manufacturers. Mod model manufacturers mainly work in APPs. In addition to the attack surface introduced here, the application processing logical display developed by the equipment manufacturers will also have security risk. But because the program developed by the equipment manufacturer is not a common commander, we will not introduce it here. If you want to attack programs developed by equipment vendors, you can choose vendors with a high market share. Because the MBLT ship is highly integrated and the technology is grown, it is difficult for us to purchase the evolution boss of the trees for debugging. Therefore, we can only get the running status of the chip by lock and debug it. Manufacturers has provide useful software to view logs. Through the log, we can see some output inside the chip, including the space of the baseband, the output of application, and so on. It is a little helpful for us to understand the program flow and verify software vulnerability. So how do we send package to the MBLT ship? We made some attempts. Different texting to uh, adopt according to different protocol stacks. If it is a TCP IP related test, we use Raspberry Pi EC200 and IoT SIM card to assess the network for testing. For baseband related tests, SDR and test SIM cards can be used for testing. We can use open source projects for testing, but the capability is not very good at present. At the same time, we can also buy a MLT base station for testing, but it is not easy. There are still many challenges to overcome 
throughout the testing process. And if you have some similar words, you can also communicate with a, uh, okay, my part is over. The following time will be shared by my teammate Wu Huiyu. Thanks. And we will continue to share the following part. In this part, I will provide some security suggestions about the LP1 supply chain. I hope this suggestion can help the vendors to improve their product security and they can make a small contribution to the community of LP1. For one one who believe that the node developers to the user net latest version of protocol stack for development and the development and the deployment of gateways is uh, to enable authentication and encryption mechanisms. And the service provider should clear the weak password, enable authentication and validate the input data with the open port. For MBIoT, we believe that the chip or model vendors should update third-part libraries of all chip firmware in a tiny manner. When using a corp and MQTT as a communication protocols, TLS and authentication should be adapted to improve security. In the part of EPC, operators should make a good network access policy to improve the security of the network. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your listening. And if you have any questions, you can connect us by this email.